Can you provide an overview of the concept of, of the Knowledge Center for crisis management? Yeah, sure. So what we aim at with the Knowledge Center is that we want to create a space where uh, knowledge and lessons learned and plans and procedures are all centralized and at one spot so that they are accessible as well as for the people who are actually have to work when crises are happening and for people who are busy with preparing on crisis management. So there should be some sort of centralized space when, where all that knowledge is accessible um, because there is a lot of knowledge and there are a lot of plans and pre procedures and there is a lot of experience with crisis management on the island. But what we're now trying to do is make that knowledge accessible, easy findable, etc. cetera. Uh, what are the key objectives and goals of establishing a self-sustaining training and education capacity within the Knowledge Center? Um, for me, the most important goal, I think, is that um, we know that we have the knowledge to deal with crisis on island. Um, and on island means government, but also means uh, crisis partners, organizations on island, but also to people on St. Martin who have to deal with crisis. I mean, the island is on in a place where you have to deal with natural crisis, of course. I mean, we just had uh, Hurricane Tammy and those kind of uh, 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 warnings uh, and happenings are actual being here at the island. So what we're trying to do is make sure that we have that knowledge, that we have people who know how to deal with crisis, who can uh, uh, help others prepare for crisis um, and make sure that we have one point of access to all that knowledge. How do you envision the knowledge um, center supporting ongoing training and education efforts and crisis management moving forward? Well, what for me is important to have that one spot is that we learn to talk the same language when we're talking about crisis. So if we have one spot created with dedicated trainers who can actually help those different organizations um, with their preparation on crisis, we all learn to speak the same language. And when we are in a crisis, it's very important that we speak that same language so that we know about each other. How can we find each other? What are we talking about? But also what are each roles and responsibilities in dealing with that crisis? Okay, so what steps are being taken right now that you see, especially as a representative of Vanity International, working with us, training with us to ensure that the training and education capacities mm -hmm. uh, within the Knowledge Center are self-sustaining, uh, especially in such a, a dynamic um, mm -hmm. situation of Mother Nature, man-made disasters. It's constantly evolving. What would it you is. say are the steps being taken right now? Well, we have different steps. First of all, we just finished the, the TOT program, which means we have now 14 certified trainers on island who know how to train and educate people and organizations on crisis management. So uh, they uh, have fully a knowledge about crisis management, but also about delivering training programs on that. And with that group, we are now expanding the knowledge center in um, um, trying to find information and knowledge and to create training programs so that also new people entering, for example, the government know how to handle crisis. Those people are not only trained as trainers, but they are, they are in many cases also very important. They, they play a very important role during crisis. So they are, are like the right hand of the ESF coordinators. Um, they help them with, for example, information management with a solid uh, decision-making structure. So they're not only trainers in the preparation phase, but they are also during crisis. They know what to do. They know how they are trained and they know how to find each other. And I think that is also a key point, that they know how to find each other, which means that different ESFs can communicate even more easily with each other. that concerns me most is that people are very tired they're very frustrated um i would also be frustrated and i've told many people you know if i wasn't running i don't know if i would want to vote you know but at the end of the day i would because it's it's my civic duty um it's a right that people are still fighting for um around the world the right to be able to choose their representatives and um i definitely would still want to contribute to that so 
trying to just, you know, bring that message to the people directly, um, you know, meet them uh, in their districts, meet them in their homes, which we've always done as a party, but this time around, definitely ramping it up. Okay, I know um, the PSP does campaigning a bit different, so you guys don't have the public, the big public meetings, and yeah. you guys keep it small. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that this works better, or you feel like this is just something that you guys do? I think it's um, I think it's something that you know, and I think Miklos haven't been around other big campaigns can maybe can maybe jump in as well, but I think it's something that has to change um you know we also started the party when we talk about progress we don't just talk about in government etc we talk about doing politics different you know changing our political culture to a point where people are focused on the character of an individual and not their entertainment value because a lot of times what we see is, is is candidates that that you know they're very flashy and they're very like out there on a stage but the content and the, the content of their character is lacking you know, and that is what you need really to, to drive things forward. You can have all the good solutions in the world, right. but if people's characters are not where it's meant to be, the solution is not going to happen. And this way you have the, how you say, the, the heart on heart conversations. You meet someone more intimate and, you know, you can hear their problems, but on a grand scale like that, you can't really connect to the yeah. same amount of people. Yeah. So. Okay. Understood. Um, so, former minister, reflecting on your time as a minister, what do you consider to be your most significant accomplishment? Well, I would tie that into the, the reason why I'm running as well, uh, policy. I come out of the policy department from at Vrami. Mm -hmm. I've been working in that department for over 20 years, from 2001, back then it was Edo Bay, and then 10, 10, 10, we transformed into Vrami. And working in that department for so long, the team, I must say, not only me because I do GIS there, but the team has been working on policies and they never really had gotten anywhere. And when I was minister for the 20 months, we had the two zoning plans of Middle Region and Dutch Water reach the floor of parliament for approval. They weren't approved, but they had gotten as far as yeah. the council of advice, right. I believe, right? So, and since then, no policies have haven't been yeah, gotten that far. So I must say, yeah, I'm advocating for policies. And when I was there, I was proud of that, of, you know, two of our projects. Bringing it up, yeah, yeah. Got, okay. Getting on the floor of parliament for approval. Okay, and what were some of your biggest challenges you faced while you were minister? Okay, that's a good question. That was, <laughs> where, where right, <laughs> that was right after Hurricane Irma is when mm -hmm. I went in January 2018. And back then it was building back resilient, building back better in a rush, you know, because we had practically six months to prepare for the other hurricane season when I went in. So that was a challenge indeed. And then just dealing with the day-to-day, -day, everyday operations in Vrami itself, that in itself is one of the biggest challenges I think anyone could face. Yeah. Right. SV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SV is cardless. Request your My SV account today and enter the virtual office of SV. Go to SV.SX and sign up now. SV, yeah. your social health insurance.
he won't even be able to sit in Parliament, which is something that you have been dispelling uh, for quite some time. I'm happy you brought that as the first question. Mm -hmm. um, let me say to all the people that are believing that, um, we have story time with Papa Umpu. Uh -huh. Go and do it over there. Mm. But when you join the political arena and you want to discredit me, discredit my ability. Mm -hmm. The law is very, very clear, Super, and I'm going to take two minutes to explain. Sure, go ahead. Article 50.2 says, if you are in office and you are convicted, not irrevocably, but convicted mm -hmm. for a crime as stipulated, uh, I think it's uh, various crimes, bribery, falsification, etc. Right. You will be suspended for the term of the year, the that, parliamentary that term. That term. Correct. Mm -hmm. Some of these people have now made it the term of your conviction or the term of... No, no, no. They're saying you're, you're suspended for the term of the court case. Oh, so if so the court the court, case right. is five more years, mm -hmm. you suspend. That, that is absolute ludicrousy. Mm -hmm. That is not written in our constitution. But you have, you know, you have cooks, you have wannabe financial experts that right. come out and talk this nonsense. And what hurts me is when a lawyer jumps in. Mm -hmm. Because no better, do better. Because then you, you cannot tell me that you read the constitution. I have people from the Netherlands that have been a member of the Rats and Staten for over 10 years mm -hmm. as a constitutional expert. And they wrote out our story. And they said, they, look, France, for example, cannot take a seat because he was now irrevocably sentenced in cassation right. and he had a five-year ban. Mm -hmm. So France, remember, the term is the term of parliament. Mm -hmm. That's why it's also stated when you get suspended, somebody else is pushed in and will resign at the end of the term. Mm -hmm. So was I acquitted, for example, last year in November, I would not be able to go back to Parliament. That's a flaw in the Constitution mm -hmm. because it says until the end of the term. I am suspended at that point in time. Right. The term came to an end in um, the last election, January 10th, February 10th, I believe mm -hmm. somebody went in. The term came to an end. Then you go to Article 49. Mm -hmm. Why is it that at 10 o'clock this morning, I'm allowed to be postulated and be a candidate. So if I was to lose my seat, mm -hmm. it would mean that the Constitution of St. Martin allows voters fraud. Mm -hmm. Because you are telling me, go ahead and run, but then you can't take, you can't your, seat. take your seat. It's not logical. It's, it's nonsense. Right. That's why for those boys and girls that want to... You see, when you can't beat me super, you're going to look for something to try to manipulate... Like how the DP used to say, mm -hmm. if I can't convince you, I'm going to confuse you. Mm -hmm. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah. But this time around, I will be presenting in the media also everything. My lawyers already um, have prepared the piece. And we're going to put it out. But we're going to put it out strategically when the time is right. Because I want to catch them when the time is right. And yeah. show their credibility is touchy. But their knowledge mm -hmm. is way off bound. Because if you don't even know. What our constitution says. How can you take an oath swearing on the constitution that you're going to uphold it and you don't even understand it? Right. Now, do you, do you think that article that was written in the Daily Herald a few days right before elections that, like you said, if you can't, confuse, if you can't convince them, you got to confuse them, probably kind of confuse some people when it comes to some? You, you running in I the lost election? my seat because mm -hmm. of that article. Yeah. And, the, the you know, Super, I am a very quiet fellow sometimes. Mm -hmm. When they said that the Central Voting Bureau said ABC. I called Miss Tackley. Mm -hmm. And you can ask her, you all can interview her. She said, I, I have saved the screenshots of the WhatsApps. We had discussions. She said, I never said that. Mm. The lady asked about the Cholov's briefing. And she says, the Cholov's briefing are very simple. Nobody can be held out of Parliament with a Cholov's brief. Right. Because it's just like a hammer stick. It's just, yeah, okay, we agree with it. We play politics with it, but it's not a political tool. Mm -hmm. So, that was the only question she asked. She never even mentioned my name. Right. Yet she wrote a full page because that she did that as a favor mm -hmm. to another politician. Mm. I won't go in their personal details, but when push comes to shove, push me far enough, and I'm gonna sack all the names. Mm.
SFV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SFV is cardless. Request your My SFV account today and enter the virtual office of SFV. Go to SFV.SX and sign up now. SFV, yeah, yeah. your social health insurance. For a new brand that is as bold, vibrant, and colorful as the island of St. Martin. With colors drawn from our diversity, cultural heritage, and nature. Our breathtaking beaches, waters, and sun. The majestic brown pelican, our national symbol. The radiant yellow sage, our national flower. The historic border monument, signifying the Dutch and French sides. Our exciting cruise, yachting, and boating ports. Renowned Maho Beach and St. Martin Airport, the hub to the Caribbean. All these parts come together to create the shape of the island of St. Martin. More than a logo. It's a new brand that engages, excites, and will inspire travelers to book. It's time to tell the St. Martin story, to reintroduce travelers to St. Martin, to honor our past, to embrace our present, and shape our future. Our culture and diversity, Dutch and French sides, unrivaled cuisine, twice the nightlife, entertainment, and shopping, cruises, boating, and yachting. Twice the adventure, exploration, and relaxation. Splendid and scenic accommodations. Pinel, Tentamar, and island hopping in the Caribbean. Whatever your taste, St. Martin has more. Experience twice the Caribbean. St. Martin. years now agriculture when would government uh, for example first of all regulate the situation with the land that mr wyatt is dealing with for over 10 or 15 years or however long i mean as long as i can remember this is something mr wyatt is dealing with land not being regulated and we're talking about land we want to help farmers i think the first place to begin is right there uh, St. Martin do not have land, like you said, and there's a lot going to be expounded on on hydroponics. What about having agriculture as a subject in school, getting it in the syllabus of St. Martin? That's exactly it. Both things that you just mentioned is 100%. Another thing I didn't mention for us is that we want to maybe even have the farms, whatever farm that, but if you have, if you're using your land space for, for agriculture, that it would not be taxed. Um, that's one of the things we're looking at in general. When I talk about subsidizing and supporting the farmers, I mean it holistically there, not only with land, but also with water. That the water is at a low price or free, depending. So we still have to um, work that out. But when I talk about supporting the farmers, look what St. Kitts is doing for their farmers. I mean, we need to go all the way and bat for our farmers as well. Secondly, when it comes to education, capacity building, that too. It should be a syllabus in the schools. I agree with you. That's the one thing that we, not only these pilot pro programs, but it should be a full syllabus in school. And I think Mr. Jocelyn Richardson 
wrote a syllabus a while back about um, on it. So that's something we can also look into and have execute. So yes, indeed, those are the key areas we'll be looking at. Thank you. You mentioned about subsidizing. Yes. Um, I mean, land cost is expensive. Agriculture water, is expensive. Water is expensive. So let's say subsidizing water, GB is not in the greatest of financial situations. And government, as you mentioned in the last press uh, conferences, needs to cut 32 million guilders from the budget. Yeah. So when you're talking about finding resources to subsidize, how do you reconcile that against the financial realities of the utility company and government itself? I also mentioned that we're going to be working with the um, TWO on this. Um, one of the, we can ask there for subsidy, and I'm trying my utmost Emil, not to cut anything on the agriculture as well. But also, we are looking at not only um, not only uh, this 175,000 guilders, we're looking to also finding a way to increase that in the next, in the next 2025 budget. And um, once we have, I think, we have the financial backings once we have a plan in place. They're waiting for us to show us the plan. And by this, this fact finding mission will allow us to do that. Another thing we want to do, and I, I, think that's, I think I told it to them verbally, I told it to them both verbally, they need to be self-sustainable. I would love to see our farms, our existing farms now, completely off the grid. Most of them are going there already. I, ha I saw that at um, our root farms, and Mr. Denicio White as well, is like 75% there. So that is one of the, I want to, I want, we want, I would love for government to get them all off the grid to become more self-sustainable. Agriculture is expensive. So what we have right now, we want to just protect and support as much as possible. Um.